Okay, we got YouTube member Robotech00. What classifies you as a comic nerd? What people... Why do people think that if you can recite a storyline or write or artist, a writer or an artist that you don't know anything about comics? Why, why do people make a big deal if you don't use Mylar? Why do you think about the Captain Power comeback that they're trying to do? There's a couple of things in there, man. And you got what, what, I'm, what I'm starting to realize is, since you asked, is that, you know, comic books is a genera generational thing, okay? Comic books have been around for a long damn time. I mean, we're, we're hitting, you know... I mean, technically 75 years with Superman popping up, but there's stuff that came out before that. There's the pulps. There's the little... I mean, I can go... This stuff goes back, okay? I mean, I could actually make a case for going back to the K-Man drawings, you know, on, on you know, they found in France and stuff. Some, you know, always been storytelling with pictures and, and words and, and stuff like that. And... Um, it's a generational thing. I, I'm really down on the 52 now, but I don't want to be that guy that poo-poo's on it, you know, because there's been things on here where um, it's about passion, okay, and it's about nostalgia, and then it's like, it's, it's what else are you looking for in, that, in, in, in these comics? I get into the messages that they're having. I get into the big picture, how to connect the dots. Um, if you've watched any of my videos, I'm big on the real history of the comic industry, not just the comics. The creators and stuff that was on there and stuff. Now, why do people do that? What you're talking about, about why if you don't have a lot of comic knowledge or something like that, why can't you, I think you're asking why can't we just enjoy comics and not worry about how am I showing off my comics and stuff like that. Well, there's a lot of things, man. I like... I like, I like, you know, it, it's all about opinion and stuff. Why are you collecting comics, first of all, okay? You're, we're not going to jive with other people. Everybody has a car, but a lot of people know more about, you know, the history of a car and classic cars, and they can work on their own car, and some people have to take it to mechanics and stuff. It's all about how much you're putting into the comics and stuff. <clears throat> now, I can only speak for myself. I don't really uh, try to belittle people and stuff I think when they're getting into comics I don't if somebody's getting into comics because it's trendy and it's always a powder keg of a conversation around here but it's my channel and I ain't answering to nobody I'm just going to answer the question get that out there but to me there's people have gotten into comics because it's trendy it's it's acceptable now and uh, you know and it's not a hobby for everybody you know there's so much to put into it, and a lot of people put a lot of effort and a lot of years in reading their comics that, you know, some people might feel like unappreciated scholars because they have all this knowledge. Some people work really hard, and they're proud of it, and it get, kind of gets to them. I've looked at my collection before and been like, I mean, many times, been like, what have I done? What have I done? You know, and I've gotten bothered by seeing these people come in, and they'll do things for attention or it's trendy and then they'll get mad if they don't get attention and they close their channels down so a lot of the stuff comes from not you doing anything but kind of being in the wrong place at the wrong time with some people's attitudes i think um i'm really oversimplifying this i can get deep into it um some people have to if you feel like an unappreciated scholar uh you know you have to get that ego rubbed by belittling people and stuff. Um, and then some people, you know, just may not like you, and this is something they can dig and, and throw at you. I mean, it's an interesting question, and, and I probably need a little bit more uh, background on your experiences with these people you're talking about. Now, when it comes to Mylar, now let's face it, you know, you get around people and stuff like that, they like their books to look good. They're proud of what they got, okay? Be it money, be it they just love that book and stuff like that. Uh, some people just want to treat their books well and be able to show them off and have them look great, get you know the appreciation there and stuff like that. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I got Watchmen up there, freaking framed and stuff, you know, because I, I like it that way. Um, you know, and then the bottom line is, is some people are just fucking assholes. Okay, it's a personality thing. It doesn't have anything to do with comics. They'd be this way anywhere with anything around other people. You know, all about insecurities and having to break down people to make themselves feel good. I mean, it's all kinds of things, you know. Um, overall, man, my experiences with most people on, on YouTube and run across, in general, comic book people have been really nice people. I got a video, Cookie Dough and Reflections or something, where I talk about how everybody's kind of connected. You can read a, you know, we talk about Commandy around here and stuff. I can read a, a Commandy comic book from 1974 right now 
meet somebody who actually read Commandy number four in 1974, whenever, whatever you want to do, and we have the same experience over decades. I can read that same comic book now, and somebody in Australia can read that comic book, and we just had the same experience. So, you know, I'm, you know, hope, I, 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 I'm going to chalk it up to you just met some assholes. That's what I think, you know. Um... What I think about the Captain Power comeback, absolutely nothing. Um, I wasn't a fan of the cartoon when I was a kid in the 80s and stuff. Um, I know Neil Adams designed Captain Power. Uh, wait a minute, I'm thinking Captain Planet. Let me digress, let me read that again. Alright, this whole Captain Power thing, I'm going to put it to the side. I don't know, I was thinking Captain Planet. So, uh, sorry about that one, man. All right, Colin Fultz, YouTube name, Marvel DC Fan Reviews. In your opinion, what is the best way to have a successful YouTube channel? Oh, wow. Um, I don't consider myself to have a successful YouTube channel at all. Um, I enjoy what I do. I enjoy, I'm appreciative everybody takes time to watch. Uh, I, take time, I appreciate everybody takes time to comment and stuff. Um, but honestly... What I'm seeing, you know, over the stuff I've watched on YouTube and stuff, the people who are really, uh, you know, successful is that you got to have a set of tits and be willing to put them out there. Now, to have an enjoyable YouTube channel for, like, comics and stuff and collectibles and stuff that we're doing here and vlogging and stuff like that, what I enjoy and some of my videos that were a bit more popular, the ones I got the most compliments on and stuff, is where you, you talk about what you have a passion for. You talk about stuff you're not a dry well on, you're, you, you know, some things you're knowledgeable about. And I'm not talking about, you know, every freaking line in the book or something like that. It's just you got some information and you want to put it out there. You're, you're hyping the book a little bit and you, your joy of the book comes out. I think that makes it. I think uh, being proud of your collection is good. I think putting your ego to the side, not being here for an ego, um, helps make your videos a little bit more honest and... Uh, and it raises your integrity a little bit, which people still do respect, I think. I feel like I'm preaching to some kids or something here. It must be the tie. Um, so I apologize. And, uh, but, and I think a variety uh, of comics helps you have a better collection, which gives you more stuff to talk about in your videos and to bring up and stuff. Um, I've seen the videos where it's just skits. I've seen videos where it's just the people uh, sitting around doing a Google Plus chat and stuff. Um, so, you know, a successful channel, you know, I, I don't know. You know, I think it's boob tube mostly and people faking stunts and setting up things. And then there's some people who have legitimate, really nice YouTube channels that are quite enjoyable. Um, they just click with people. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. But uh, I, I know what I look for and what I like. I like seeing somebody with passion. I like somebody who, even if they're new in comics, and you're like, oh, man, this stuff's great. You know, they have this attitude like, where's this been all my life? And it doesn't matter if they're doing trades. It doesn't matter if they found some comics in the attic. Somebody gave them some comics. They got in there, and they liked it. And they got on here, and they got into the conversation. You know, um, and I also think uh, reaching out and finding some people on YouTube and talking to them behind the scenes kind of helps, you know. Um, tag tag videos, blogging, um, you know, if you get an idea about something to talk about um, and, and it got inspired by somebody else's video, give that guy some props. Tell people to check out his channel and then do your take on it, stuff like that. You know, kind of reach out there. And I think that might energize you. You know, I, I don't know. I don't know. You know, all I got. I hope that didn't disappoint. Um... We got Ponaditas. Where do you like to shop for all your collectibles? I too like to uh, pock up cheap and go to used bookstores and conventions occasionally on eBay. Um, well, see, that's the thing, man. I'm, there's there's times where I feel like I'm a 65 year old lady, man, out on the road, man. I hit anything and everything. I mean, I, I can. I've gone to trainings where they sent me eight hours away for the week and stuff. And I've looked up and had a nose. I know how to look in the phone books. I know how to just kind of walk in the street and be like, you know, they might be selling some junk in there. I've walked ass backwards into people who actually had a box of comics in their car. And, you know, I would just be like, hey, what's up? What's going on? What you got there? I bought records that way. I bought a bunch of... I went camping and found a guy with a van and his kids and his wife in it. 
and we were getting ready to go horseback riding at this place up and, and turned around and he had these records in there. So my favorite places to shop are flea markets, our yard sales, uh, doing the round. I enjoy the hunt. Um, I'm not big on antique shops. I mean, I'll go check them out, but they always overprice stuff, man. I mean, I, I could wipe my ass with a comic, set it in there for and, and, and charge 30 bucks and nobody would like, you know, think twice about it, you know. So yeah, I, I really enjoy flea markets and I like those sales. I like... Uh, you know the the random comic book shop out in the middle of nowhere I've never seen. You know the exploring, but to me it's the hunt. Uh, and anywhere and everywhere, estate sales can be good. But the thing about estate sales is that sometimes you got to kind of nose around. You know, kind of look in that closet. Look, look, stick your head in there and look straight down in that inside corner and stuff. Sometimes there'll be a box of comics there. I know a guy who got um, every appearance of the Silver Surfer from his first appearance in uh, Fantastic Four, uh, 48 or whatever it was and into like the defenders okay and he paid 30 bucks for it and i told him he should have went 12 bucks told him it was all look at these comics all old and wrinkly they didn't know it was there so yeah it's the hunt anywhere and everywhere but like some flea markets and uh yard sales were my biggest luck as a matter of fact i went to a comic book shop 45 minutes away in boom and he told me that a guy had just walked in. There's all kinds of yard sales all the way down there. I ended up stopping three or four times. It took me five hours to go 45 minutes. I stopped so much and found stuff. And this guy had just, I think I saw him walking out, but this guy had just walked in and he had Todd McFarlane's Amazing Spider-Man 298, 299, and issue 300. He bought for a buck a piece. So, yeah. 